their relevant trips when raising issues in Parliament. Our home editor, Mark Easton, has this exclusive report. The sun-kissed beaches of the Maldives. Party time on the Med. A Caribbean tropical paradise. Holiday locations for some, but just a few of the destinations for members of parliament accepting free trips paid for by foreign governments. There's nothing wrong with MPs going on fact-finding trips overseas, but there are strict rules to make sure no one can accuse our elected representatives of accepting foreign hospitality in return for political favours. Rules that our investigation reveals are regularly broken. Take the Mediterranean tourist retreat of Cyprus. Every autumn, a group of British MPs accept free trips there, courtesy of the island authorities. One of them, Labour's Andrew Dismore, goes every year. But in the last five years, he's also asked more than 200 Commons questions, signed motions and led debates, all about Cyprus. The questions alone cost the taxpayer an estimated £30,000. Mr Dismore denies doing anything wrong, but according to our investigation, he has breached the regulations on over 90 occasions. What's more, Mr Dismore is a member of the parliamentary body which is supposed to police MPs who break the rules. If you've got members of the committee who themselves have breached the rules, well, what trust can we have it that this committee, a key part of the self-regulating system, is really going to do a decent job? What the regulations say is that if an MP accepts hospitality from another country, they must register it in a parliamentary book within a month. They must also declare that registration when tabling relevant questions, motions or debates, either verbally or by ensuring the letter R appears against their name. This is so that anyone reading parliamentary reports knows about the interest. There's also an outright ban on MPs pushing the UK government to give extra help to another country from which they've recently received hospitality. Such lobbying the rules state risks undermining the reputation of the House of Commons. It is a long time since the UK last gave them a grant and it's time we gave them another one. Mr Dismore, seen here urging ministers to fund UN efforts in Cyprus, denies lobbying and argues he didn't need to declare visits when raising issues about the island. He's not the only MP who's accepted free trips to Cyprus and then raised Cypriot concerns in the Commons. During the current parliament, four other members, three Labour and one Conservative, have done so without declaring the hospitality. For most people, an invitation to the Maldives would be the trip of a lifetime. Conservative MP David Amos has enjoyed two expenses-paid trips. Shortly after the first visit, he led a Commons debate about the islands. I hope to cheer everyone up with this debate about the Maldives. Now, Mr Speaker, when we die, most of us aspire to enter paradise, even though we might be sinners. But Mr Amos had not registered the fact that what he called his splendid visit had come courtesy of the Maldives government, a serious breach of the rules. Perhaps the government, given the financial constraints, could perhaps be encouraged to do a little more than uh, is being done at, at, at the moment. In pressing for UK government help for the island, he gives rise to the perception that he's lobbying on behalf of his hosts, another serious breach. And Mr Amos didn't register a second trip to the Maldives for almost a year and also failed to declare his interest on more than a dozen other occasions. He says the rules allowed him to decide the questions weren't relevant and blames a member of his staff for failing to register the trips properly. MPs like to go on trips. Uh, some of those trips are financed by foreign governments. I always assumed that they would have to declare all that properly when they came back and if they made representations on behalf of those governments that should all be openly known. If that's not happening, it's very serious. Every year, the people of Gibraltar celebrate their independence from Spain and their links with the UK. The local government, keen to get British MPs to press its case, has funded more than 30 free trips to Gibraltar for MPs. Let's hear it for Lindsay Hoyle! One regular guest is Labour's Lindsay Hoyle, who's been entertained there three times. On his return, he's tabled dozens of questions and motions about Gibraltar, and all without declaring his interest. He's not the only one to have raised Gibraltar's case following trips. Tory Andrew Rossendale has tabled more than 60 questions and motions about the rock without declaring his interest. Thirteen other members, eight Labour, two Liberal Democrats and three Conservatives, 
also signed motions or asked questions about Gibraltar without declaring a recent visit. In total, our investigation has identified more than 400 breaches of the Commons rules. The MP's code says failing to register or declare a relevant interest is a very serious breach. When accepting overseas visits, MPs are warned they should be mindful of the reputation of the House of Commons. If day after day when people are standing up in Parliament, signing early day motions, asking questions of ministers, they're not declaring an interest that they should have declared, then they're undermining the integrity of the system. No one denies that MPs need to travel to get first-hand understanding of the issues affecting Britain and the world. But the widespread breaking of the parliamentary rules on overseas visits suggests the self-regulating system of scrutiny is not working well enough. Mark Easton, BBC News. And you can find uh, lots more details on Mark's investigation. It's on the BBC website. Quick reminder of the address for you, bbc.co.uk slash news. And the item is there for you to see.